Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. I have a seat around the fire. It's uh, starting to get chilly out there, so getting going with the indoor projects. If you saw my previous video, I just got a Case 530 gasoline backhoe and uh, runs, but it has some issues. So I took the carpet to it or off and uh, got it on the workbench now on the operating table. So let's take a look at it. Oh boy, this is uh, starting to look like a disaster here, huh? This is uh, reminiscent of uh, AVE's workbench when he starts a video. What he usually does is shoves all the shit off to the side. I'm not going to do that. I, uh, I got some, some little parts and pieces I don't feel like losing. All sorts of stuff going on here. We got the carburetor to the backhoe. A load tester, the a battery I don't think is very much good on that backhoe. I got it on the charger now. Some chunks of wood. We're learning how to start a fire with a with a bow drill. There is most definitely a a learning curve to it. As you see we got some char going on. Never was able haven't been able to get a, a good ember yet, unfortunately. But uh Man, you gotta, gotta give those old timers some credit, those old cavemen or whatever. This is not easy, especially in today's world when you can just flick a lighter or strike a match and bam, there you go, you have fire. And let's see, we got in this box here more, more uh, fire starting stuff. I'm trying to find some good tinder. If anybody, if anybody knows where the hell you're supposed to make or what you're supposed to make good tinder out of this is under layer bark from I think it's like an ash tree or something they're all dying so I just peel the bark off and you can make you can make pretty decent fluffy stuff with it this is the stuff you peel off really papery I got it drying out now but I try putting a lighter to it it hardly burns and I watch those how-to videos and they have a little pile of tinder and they strike a spark and puff on it a bit and bam there's fire make it look easy so let's set that aside too oh we got some traps going on learning all sorts of backwoodsy uh, bushcraft stuff I guess that would be the terminology for it this is a Paiute deadfall trap vertical piece your angled piece little toggle that swings around there you put a trigger stick against it and you prop a rock on top of there and once you knock the trigger stick out that falls that falls the whole thing falls down and crushes the little wabbit or whatever it is that's going to be your dinner this is going to be a top bearing bearing block for the bow drill this wet wood green wood uh, apparently hardwood, greenwood, or even something harder like antler or bone is good for good for that. Reduces friction. Throw that off to the side too. Nice dry wood for making fireboards. You ever go in a craft shop, Michaels or whatever, and they sell these live live edge log slices? I've never bought them, but Apparently they're pretty damn expensive. My girlfriend wanted some and uh, said how expensive they were, so I tried making my own. Tough to get a real clean cut with a chainsaw, but you know, we'll figure it out. And I think we're getting down to, to mechanical stuff now. Look at that. We got the, uh, this is the, the big end bearing for the Rust and Hornsby. I finally got off my ass and cleaned that up a bit. Check out these. Check out these bolts. It's interesting, huh? Multi, multi diameter. Got it all cleaned up. The babbit looks okay. All right. Well, I've learned a long time ago. Maybe you guys have too, or maybe not. If you're new to uh, all this mechanical stuff, when you're rebuilding the carburetor or anything small and fiddly for that matter, do it in something like this. 
you know, when you buy these for baking, after a while the non-stick coating starts to flake off. You don't want to eat that stuff, so it becomes a perfect drain pan or small parts pan. So take your carburetor and all your bits and pieces. I started taking this apart a little bit last night. Throw them all in there, and that way you're never going to lose it. So, I was going to buy a carburetor rebuild kit last night, and it's funny, somebody just commented on my backhoe video, says, I guess I mentioned rebuilding the carburetor, getting a kit or something, and he comments, why does, it, capital letters, why does everybody think you need a carburetor kit to rebuild a carburetor? And, uh, you know, he is right. I've bought plenty of carburetor kits, and they're all just fucking worthless, partly because it seems like there's a lot of interchangeability, so they give you a bunch of crap in the kit you don't need, but the one thing you do need, they don't give you in the kit, whatever it may be. They always give you a fuel fuel inlet needle. Unless you lose this, you never need it. But, uh, you know, sometimes the the fuel screw gets, gets messed up if somebody tightens this too much, and you want a new one of those, well it doesn't come with that. You want one of these, it, buy a parts carburetor or, or make one. It's, you know, it just it is just unusual. So if you can get away with taking the carburetor apart without ruining this gasket, you're all set. Or if you're crafty and you have some good gasket paper, rip away and you can just make a new one. I've made, I've made plenty. Anyway, this is a, what is this, a, a Zenith? Carburetor, Zenith carburetor. I have not found a model number on. I don't know. I don't know what what the hell the model is. This carburetor has a removable venturi. Uh, I've seen some of these carburetors with this and some without. I imagine it's uh, easier to manufacture it. This is just a straight bore in here, and there's a lot of other features that people that the manufacturer had had to take care of. And then the, this uh, Venturi, it's, uh, well, Venturi shaped. It's got a, a throat in it that's it, smaller diameter. So what happens there as the air is flowing through that, as the air flows through the smaller diameter middle portion, uh, Bernoulli's equation, I don't know, anybody remember that from physics class? As the velocity, the, the flow rate's the same, so as the velocity of the air increases because it's going through a smaller diameter hole, the pressure decreases, so it creates a partial vacuum, and that's what sucks fuel up through that, that fuel needle, or jet, rather. So this is an insert. It's probably easier to make it this way, cast it out of a, this is a, you know, zinc or you know, aluminum or something. So let's start taking this apart. I want you to take these fuel screws out, turn them in first until they stop and count how many turns because at least in my case if you have something that's already running you know that the settings are more or less correct so turn this in if let's say you turn it in one full turn before it stops make sure to reinstall this at the same location you can dial it in later because it may not be correct but at least it was running so I got the bottom half all cleaned up that was pretty quick and easy not much going on here I just find this interesting, and uh, some of you might out, out there might too. This is the inlet to the main fuel needle, main fuel screw. And you can see this is where the fuel screw was. See that hole going into into the threads. So it comes in the back side of the of the fuel screw. Here's the fuel screw, by the way. Take it out as one assembly. This larger nut, that's just a packing nut to uh, seal the shaft of the screw into this brass insert or, you know, brass piece. Anyway, so fuel comes in there and then you see in the center of that brass insert there, that's where the fuel screw seats against or, you know, comes close to, to throttle or meter your amount of fuel going in subsequently, or, you know, after that goes through here to the jet. Interesting little thing, I don't know if you can really notice it in the camera, but this part of the bowl here and here is low, 
and up here where the fuel comes in is a little bit higher, maybe a quarter inch higher if you were to hold this perfectly level. So I find that interesting, all the water and the shit and everything and sediment will settle down to the low spot. So even if you have dirty fuel or whatever, water, you have a, still a pretty good chance of getting clean fuel to your fuel screw, fuel needle. And then there we have a drain, so you can drain off the, uh, the junk if you ever need to. And as you see, this has been a, this is an aftermarket addition, but I, uh, I kind of like it. The best way to, to, to determine if these passages are clogged or not, I feel, it, rather than taking it out and risking messing up that, that uh, flathead screwdriver slot, you just get your carburetor cleaner with the straw on it, jam it in there as well as you can, and give it a squirt and see where the fluid comes out. If it comes out where you think it should be coming out from, you're all set. If it doesn't come out anywhere, if it just sprays back at you, that's probably clogged. I did that same treatment on the top top part. I took the plugs out of the the other uh, inlet fuel inlet positions uh, so I could really blast anything out that was in there because there was a chunk of crap on the seat there that caused the needle to not seat. I took out the idle screw and there's these two passages here. I tried blowing them out with the carburetor cleaner. It flows out, it flows through this one, but not through that little screw. So I'm going to try to remove that one. Looks like it's been uh, uh, loved before, so hopefully we have some success there. Well, luckily that insert came in and out, or out and in, no problem. Nice little screwdriver came right out. I could see through it. Uh, there's a very, very fine little hole in there. Sprayed it out, put the nozzle in there from the carburetor cleaner, blew it out some more. That's, I believe, the, the inlet, fuel inlet for the idle circuit. Now the last thing I'm gonna do, which arguably should have been the first thing, uh, take a chisel or scraper or whatever and just clean up your gasket surface. This is pretty clean, there isn't any gasket stuck to it. But there's a little bit of rust. It's not a big deal. It'll probably seal up fine. But while you're at it, you know, there's no harm in just cleaning it up a little bit. But on that note, though, don't you know, don't uh, put any any sort of sealer on this gasket because the gasoline will just dissolve it. Especially RTV or something. That would just be an awful idea. That'd be a nightmare. Indian head seems to kind of resist gasoline, but not not permanently. It does, it does dissolve after a while. So that's that. I'm gonna do the same thing on on here. Uh, that's this is a uh, you know whatever it is aluminum kept pot metal. So that's that's not a uh, rusty or anything. It's already nice and clean. But there you go. That's uh, that's that's all there is to it cleaning a carburetor so I don't know who who responded or who commented on my backhoe video about the carburetor kits whoever you are you are correct once again unless you lose something but you know what I bet find me a carburetor kit that has this fuel needle and you could easily drop this and it goes into the fourth dimension and you're you're just fucked or sometimes your float may have a, a hole in it and if you can't solder it or whatever you might want a new one Time to time to put it back together. I put the uh, inlet needle and float on. It uh it doesn't hurt to check the operation of everything. So as the gas comes up, pushes that inlet needle shut. As the gas goes down, lets it open. Seems to be fine there. No binding. But, oh, <laughs> let's take that back off, huh? Yep. 
gasket goes on first. Now I'm seeing this, uh, this float may be a little out of adjustment. It was fine before I put the gasket on, but you see it's hitting the gasket before it really has a chance to shut that, that fuel needle, fuel inlet. So I'm just going to hold it down and give the float just a little bend downwards. It's just about parallel with the uh, body of the carburetor. That way we can ensure that it'll shut the gas flow off before it hits the gasket, before the float hits the gasket. And oh, that's not a, let's see, how did, oh boy, how did this go? <laughs> I should have paid attention if it was up, actually it only goes one way. It wouldn't fit the other way. Now there are some strange little little key ways on it. And I see that there's some matching key ways in the other half of the carburetor. So let's see, it faces thusly. Yeah. There we go. And let's see, I'm not forgetting anything. I didn't take anything out of here, so I don't have to put anything back in. And there you go. Take, put these screws in. Start with just a hand cinch and then tighten progressively until you feel the threads start to strip and then you back it off a quarter turn. I'm sure you guys know where that reference is from. There we go. Now right here we got the inlet, or I'm sorry, the main fuel screw, fuel jet, inlet need, in, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Tighten that. Let's see, this was oddly enough only uh, a turn and a quarter out. I like, this is old school, it's got the little T-handle on the, on the needle valve for on-the-fly adjustments, no screwdriver needed. So let's see, there's half, one, one and a quarter. Here's the uh, idle. This is kind of what I was talking about if you over tighten, if you over tighten these. It's, it's marked more than damaged, but if you tighten this a little bit more than how it had been, you're going to start to damage it, and that'll just mess with your uh, metering abilities since that isn't a nice even taper anymore. Man, this throttle rod sure is annoying. Half, one, one and a half, two. There's my starting point. And it looks like uh, that's the last of my spare parts are just these these plugs for the alternate fuel inlet locations. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, pretty quick and easy. You didn't need to buy anything. The carburetor kit for this was 30 bucks. Really not that bad, but it was definitely 30 bucks I did not need to spend. Even if I tore that gasket, I could, I could make one. So that's it. Once this goes back on the tractor, we can dial in the full fuel, idle fuel, and also the idle speed with that uh, stop screw there on the throttle linkage. Well, it'll be pretty well dialed in as it is. The tractor was running. Well, it ran great at the guy's house and it ran like a bitch and then stopped running when I got it to my house. So, whatever. I'm going to go through the points and stuff too. There you go. There you have it. 
At any rate, everybody, oh, distributor, uh, internal part of a distributor cap. So that's that. Unfortunately, with the weather the way it is, or not the, well, partly the weather, but the, uh, the time of year. <clears throat> it's dark when I get home. It sucks. Pain in the ass. So I'm going to have to wait till the weekend to put that carburetor back on. But in the meantime, I can edit this video and you guys can have your vicarious pleasure through it. And uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button if you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, it's nice to do a mechanical video again. This might end up being kind of a long one, but I hope you hopefully you enjoyed hanging out in the shop with me. And uh, well, there's definitely going to be more prepping videos and homesteading sort of stuff, and maybe some fire starting videos and trapping and shit hit the fan sort of stuff. We'll see. Maybe we won't, we won't even have internet anymore. Maybe we'll just get hit by a big solar flare. I think I already said that in my last video. I gotta think of a different different saying. But at any rate, thanks for watching everybody. Stay tuned for more.